Hi! Today I've got Alex. I like your shirt a lot. What Thanks. Saying? Spaced out. Spaced out. We're gonna talk about some Halloween books. Some spooky books, some scary books. Lex brought a pile of books with her as well. So whenever I film book videos with someone else in a different location, it's like, yeah, just can you just bring them all? Do you like scary books? I don't like scary things generally, but I feel like at this time of year, I just want to get into the spirit of mm -hmm. things. So like, I'll intentionally terrify myself. And I don't understand people who enjoy being scared. I get really easily freaked out by things mm -hmm. and like, then just won't be able to sleep ever again. And it just is weird that people inflict that on themselves. So if you never want to sleep again, go read these books. My first one is, a book that I love and I read either at the beginning of this year or last year I literally cannot remember Death or Ice Cream by Gareth P. Jones this is published by Hotkey the publisher that I used to work for I read the manuscript and I was just like this is so great so the setup of this is that it is all set in the same town called Larkin Mills they're all short stories but it's in a kind of way where like slowly characters from the previous stories like appear in the other stories and it's all really dark like this is I think it's like sort of middle grade age there's like a story of an artist who got pushed into one of her sculptures when it was like cement and it was still drying oh my god that's horrible <laughs> that is just a vague mention in one of the stories and then one of the other stories a girl's playing like a cursed accordion that she has to play for the rest of her life and she's like standing next to this statue and she can hear something inside. That's like House of Wax. If you want like truly creepy, small town, but like creepy in a way that you're like, oh, that's, oh, that's weird. <laughs> this one, very good. My first book is Shelley Jackson's We Have Always Lived in the Castle. It's short and it's just, it's, it's really creepy and it's about a sister, well no, what? <laughs> it's about two sisters that live in a very creepy house with their uncle um, and clearly some terrible things have happened. Just a weird vibe and it kind of gets mm -hmm. revealed over the course of the book, like what happened. Is it like ghostly as well or is it just creepy? No, it's just really unsettling. Mm. Like it's just one of those books, like it doesn't actually have like ghosts in it. Okay, so the next one is also short stories. It is the new Roald Dahl collections. This is by Penguin, where I work. This is part of a series of four, which covers like a range of human emotions, mostly bad ones. And so this is around deception. So these are just a bunch of short stories that have been published over the years in like different magazines and that cover is so freaky <laughs> as like a little elephant mask it's boy because Roald Dahl's so creepy anyway like his books for kids are like genuinely terrifying so the idea that he's written like these are like adults. once for adults yeah. yeah and I think a lot of people haven't read these no I haven't read them um, I really want to though my next book is actually like for kids and as you can probably tell from my copy which is like yellow and old I've had this for about 10 years but it's like always really stuck with me just because some of the really intense descriptions it is about a family who go on holiday in Ireland and it's meant to be all nice and wholesome but it just has these really creepy things keep happening all the kind of things that would make you feel really unnerved but you wouldn't be able to actually put your finger on what was wrong and it, as a kid really Reading this, it really stuck with me, and I just think it's amazing that you get this very specific vibe from it. Um, so there's like a weird smell in the house, and mm -hmm. that's kind of weird. And then the food starts going off a bit. At one point, one of them like is ill and looks out the window and sees like a skeletal woman like crawling across a field eating dirt. That's not for kids. And I know why, but it's actually about um, the Irish potato famine. I feel like they're kind of seeing flashes of the potato famine like happening like for some reason it's kind of like leaking through time I don't know wow. it's really good wow. in a really weird way and it's a really short read so did I even say what it was called? it's called Black Harvest by Anne Pilling <laughs> my next one is I want to say my ultimate Halloween read I love this and I keep giving it to people and like read read, read I want it. it I've talked about it before but I'm just gonna bring it back because I have to the poster of it is now up on my wardrobe as well Through the Woods by Emily Carroll again we got some short stories <laughs> Oh my god. Short stories are good for Halloween because it like... Yeah, and Christmas. It's like yeah. festive times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <gasps> it's um, so pretty. It is very beautiful. They feel like they're based on like Norwegian folk tales. Hello. Oh my god. What's that? Oh. <laughs> so good. This is like a very ghostly one. And they're all very, very airy. And I read this by myself in the dark and it wasn't <laughs> the best idea. But it's it's gorgeous. I would have all of these like prints on my wall. My next book, I feel like you've probably talked about this a lot on your channel. Yes, I have. Yeah, it's The Fifth Wave. Oh, I don't read that much sci-fi, I read a lot of fantasy. This is very much like sci-fi on planet Earth. Yeah. Yeah. And I really, really enjoyed it. And I think a lot of the questions are kind of more about how you trust people and morality. One of the scariest thing about this book is like, what the hell would you do if you were in this character's situation? Yeah. I always find those, yeah, those kind of like apocalyptic situations terrifying because I know that I would 
die very quickly. Very quickly. Very quickly mm -hmm. indeed. The next one is one that literally just popped into my mind and I can't believe I forgot about it and I sort of ran to the living room to get it and Lex has also read it. I wanted to bring it for this video. Monsters by Emerald for now. This is like in the same realm as Death or Ice Cream. It is so terrifying. So a boy and a girl and they meet in this hotel and they're in this small town they sort of wander around together loads. The girl is like super manipulative in a really creepy way and also they get obsessed with these murders so like young women keep washing up on the shore dead with like pebbles in their mouth. These kids get really obsessed with it and again it's like a town where you just feel like something is off and you don't quite know what. You also feel like the kids are really wrong as well like the whole way through. Good. Good. Creepy. My last book is Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, um, which has recently come out in the cinema. I really like this book. There are lots of parts of it that, in retrospect, I'm not 100% sure work. Like, the plot confuses me sometimes. Mm. Um, but I still just really enjoyed it. So it has all these, like, creepy old pictures in it, and the idea is that, like, Ransom found these, the author, and then wrote the story around it, I think? Yeah, it's really cool. I love it. I like the idea that it takes all the things that I'm really terrified of. Like, generally I find, like, little kid ghosts and monsters really scary, so I kind of like the fact that it humanises them and just makes them into kind of, like... <laughs> Just a little, just a normal little creepy girl monster, it's fine. Those were our Halloween recommendations. Let us know what your spookiest, scariest, spookiest book is. I also have a Halloween playlist that I love, which I'll put in the description in case you're looking for some music to listen to while you're reading your spooky books. Don't forget to subscribe to Lex's channel. We will see you guys later. Three, two, one. I've forgotten. What do we say? Dewey. Dewey! Dewey!